Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pitway. Today on the show we're going to show you the episode uh, where we've been shooting the Eastern Grey Squirrel and uh, we've been using the Sandwell Field Sport Snipe which is a 2.5 calibre sub 12 foot pound air rifle uh, and we're shooting H&N Field Target Trophy uh, 2.5 calibre pellets. Uh, before we actually get on to do the shooting we're going to tell you a little bit about the Eastern Grey Squirrel uh, and why we're out there shooting them. So. Stay tuned and hope you enjoy it. Eastern Grey Squirrels, known to us as Grey Squirrels, originated from North America. They were first introduced to England in 1876 where they quickly spread to the rest of Britain by the mid 20th century. These Eastern Grey Squirrels are considered an invasive species within the UK due to their presence contributing to the displacement of our native Red Squirrels. Greys and Red Squirrels compete for the same food source Greys, however, will rob the food caches of red squirrels, leaving them vulnerable in the winter months when food is hard to find. In areas where red and grey squirrels overlap, many immature red squirrels will not live to make sexual maturity due to dying of starvation or dying from other diseases. I'll expand on this in a second. In addition to competition of resources, the spread of the squirrel parapox virus known as squirrel pox from grey squirrels to red squirrels is thought to be a major factor in the decline of our red squirrel population. This virus works so quickly in killing its host red squirrels that after infection seeing a squirrel with squirrel pox is uncommon. Other problems caused by grey squirrels are being carnivorous they own part of the responsibility in the decline of selected woodland and songbird species as they are opportunistic and sometimes feed on bird eggs and young chicks. They strip bark from young trees stopping their growth or killing them before they mature. They also chew through expensive garden furniture sheds and summer houses due to their love and smell of wood that has been preserved. Within the UK there is an effort to stop the spread of greys by culling populations in a legal and humane manner. This is done by either trapping or shooting. Due to the above facts, grey squirrels are classed as vermin within the UK and can be humanely shot with an air rifle. So first thing I did, I filled my uh, bait feeder up and it's the one I made last year. This is the bait I've been using. So there's a little bit of wheat in there, some peanuts, some monkey nuts, some sunflower seeds and a tiny little bit of maize. Uh, and they love this, absolutely love it. Okay, the rifle I'm using is my Sandwell Field Sports Snipe. Uh, and I'm just sat and I'm going to be resting my hand like that uh, on top of my tripod as for a steady rest. Uh, and I'll be filming through the shot tracks because it's only me today. I've also you can see, I'll zoom in down to the feeder, there's the feeder, and just there look, I'll zoom in, I've got a Wi-Fi GoPro there, so hopefully I'll get some 120 frames per second footage as well, if any come. Well, that's the first one for the snipe. Nice clean headshot. He is still kicking a little bit with nerves. Really pleased with that. <laughs> Good old snipe. And hopefully, I got it on there. See, I've got a, uh, like I said, Wi Fi GoPro, so hopefully, I caught it. Nice clean headshot, there was some quite a lot of blood come out of the head when I hit him, but yeah, nice. So there we are at the feeder. 
Uh, and there's the first squirrel. Big male to fall to the Sandwell Field Salt Snipe. And there is my hide where I was sat. Again, close up. Massive amounts of head trauma. Nailed him. Right, I'll just zoom in and show you where it fell. So I'm going to have a look at that in a little while. See, it's still raining. Well, that's another one for the snipe. This one was a female, so I've had a male and a female. They don't like eating as much in the rain. Uh, I've been sat here now for a few hours and that's the first one I've seen. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to come probably again when it's not raining. So, here's the female. Nice clean headshot. Yeah, beautiful. That 2.5 does some damage, look at that. Jesus. Okay, this is uh, one of the holes uh, where the squirrels are coming out of in this big oak tree. You can see where they've uh, bitten round it. It was probably maybe a woodpecker's nest to start off with. Uh, but the squirrels have chewed all around it, make the entrance bigger uh, and then probably chewed inside it. So this makes a really good winter dray. So it's nice and safe. Uh, it'll be really warm as well once they've got uh, the leaf litter and everything in there, what they use for the bedding. I can imagine it's a really nice, warm, safe place. Uh, and this tree and this basically winter dray in the tree uh, has been used now for at least the last two years of what me and Davey's been shooting it, so I'll just zoom out. Uh, you can see it's quite a way up this big oak tree here. Uh, and basically, squirrels run along these trees uh, and down towards where the feeder is. I'll see if I can find the feeder through the camera. I'm not sure if I'll be able to. There. There you can see there's a songbird on it at the minute. Okay, what I did yesterday is I came and I looked for a new position to sight my hide. It was for two reasons. One, from the previous position, what was happening is the squirrels were coming across the top of the trees uh, and because it was pretty close to with the feeder, by the time I'd seen the squirrel coming over and then cocked the rifle, the slightest bit of movement was spooking them and sometimes they was shooting off without giving me a chance to shoot so I only managed two from that location the other lo uh, reason is where it was it was on s a slight decline uh, and it was quite hard to try and get your sh level shooting platform with your shooting chair uh, and sit comfortable while you're waiting so where the eye was before is where the tree is there with the sticks looking like a bit like a, a, a wigwam uh, and the new location is around about four meters off to my front. I'll show you that in a little while. The location of the feeder is still on the tree over there, but this time I've moved my hide back. So the hide now is around about 27 yards away. Uh, and yesterday what I did is when I came and found my position where I was going to be, uh, I put a monkey nut actually on the feeder itself and re-zeroed so the crosshair of the snipe at the minute and the scope I should say uh, the hawk scope is actually bang on 27 and it's pellet on pellet 
uh, and I demonstrated that because I wanted to make sure I was going to do humane headshots uh, that I shot the monkey nut uh, and I led it that footy, footage in. Yes, perfect. The good, another good thing about the position I am now is the squirrels now come from that hole in that oak tree like I've just shown you and they either come across the trees left uh, right to left or there's another dray down there in a thick sort of like evergreen bush where they come up left to right uh, so I've got a nice pa panoramic view uh, of my arcs of fire uh, so I can see them coming this gives me plenty of time then to basically to cock the snipe uh, and put, poke it through the hole in the eye which I'll show you in a little while uh, and get ready uh, without the squirrel being uh, spooked before it gets to the uh, the feeder so all being well we'll get a few all the shots I've done so far which is only two uh, from the last position were headshots I'll only be taking headshots uh, from this location as well I'm not interested uh, in seeing what a 2.5 can do with a heart and lung I know it'll be devastating so here's the new platform then a lot uh, flatter than the previous one what I've got here as you probably can't see is my hook uh, tripod, shooting tripod, uh, so my gun will be poking and resting through there, uh, obviously uh, my hand will be on the tripod uh, and then the stock of the snipe will be on my hand, that's how I shoot. I've put a little bit of cam net over uh, to help, to help uh, basically disguise me, obviously when I get in there I'll have my balaclava on with my face veil uh, and I'll close up these little holes here so it's really dark and there's no way that any squirrel will be able to see me. Snipping them today.
the room for the snot. So, here's one of them. You see, get again, massive amounts of damage uh, from the 2.5 caliber H&N field target trophy. Here's another one. There's two. Nice headshot again. Here's the third one. All three males. Well, folks, that's it for this episode of Vermin Hunters TV. Me and Davey hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, a pertinent point what's come out while I've been filming this is uh, a sub 12 foot pound 2.5 calibre air rifle is just as good as a 177 or a 22 for shooting vermin. The differences are you've got to make sure you use a laser range finder and know the range to the target you're shooting and you also definitely need to do your calibration of your scope so you know your aim points for the different ranges. Uh, if you don't, a metre, a metre and a half, being out by range estimation guessing and being out by it you will miss the target with 2.5 where with a 2.2 you may get away with it, you may not, a 177 uh, you probably will get away with it and you'll get some sort of impact whether it's uh, in the kill zone or not is a different story so if you're interested in 2.5 calibre sub 12 foot pan air rifles please have a look into it uh, you know you can see the results, you've watched this episode 9 if you scan through back through the VHTV videos we did a review of the Sandwell Field Sports 2.5 calibre snipe uh, which is what we've been using and you can see us shooting from close range right out to maximum 12 foot pound air rifle ranges and that would be with a 177 calibre as well uh, to show you that do your own work use the range finder and they're just as good so hope you've enjoyed it what I will say is sitting here for these last two days uh, or three days really it's been uh, and using a 2.5 Springer has been real hard work to get some of these squirrels and for anyone who sits there in a hide and shoots squirrels with a spring rifle uh, I've got a lot of respect for you because I've seen it now now I've done this before and I've used a uh, PCP uh, a 177 PCP in fact and it's so much easier you know there's a difference and the difference is like night and day from shooting a PCP out of a hide to try to shoot and film with a 25 caliber or a spring rifle and the difference is obviously with a PCP you can stick your your barrel out this out the uh, Hessian or whatever you've got for camouflage uh, and you can either shoot just shoot cock shoot cock or you can put a scope cam on the back uh, and you only have to have the barrel out maybe an inch and you just hold it on your shooting rest and shoot and film so much easier now when you're using a spring rifle you've got to see the squirrel come in you've got to cock the rifle quietly and put the pellet in you then got to release the safety catch and then you've got to get it out the hide and then off to a side you've got to manipulate the camera so the camera is now onto the target get back to the target and shoot and once you've shot if you miss you've got to then come all the way out and try and do it again while the squirrel has run a little bit and stopped and then hopefully it comes back or you can move the camera and the scope uh, and the, obviously which points the rifle back at the squirrel wherever it's moved to it's absolutely nails so anyone who does it like I said and uses a spring rifle and films full credit and hats off to you because it's nails so from me and Davey thanks for watching take care and look out for future productions from Vermin Hunters TV